Hi, I'm Phileas Stain and I'm the Safari Expert and this is the second episode in a series of five featuring Botswana's Mashatu Game Reserve. Now, in the first episode, I showed you a little bit more about what you can expect to see in the reserve, but this week marks the start of our actual safari. Now, over the next six days, we will explore most of the reserve, including Mashatu's four stunning camps, starting with Tuli Safari Lodge Mashatu. Tuli Safari Lodge Mashatu is the southernmost camp in the reserve and lies on the bank of the Limpopo River near Pondriff Border Post. It was the 2nd of August and the start of our trip, and on the very first game drive, our guide Simeon decided to welcome us to Mashatu by taking us to one of the reserve's most photogenic spots, Mamagwa Hill. While making our way to the southwestern tip of the property, we got a taste of what to expect game viewing wise over the coming days as baboons, guinea fowl and a massive flock of red-billed quilias were joined by a small family of elephants at a remote water source. We also stopped to admire Solomon's Wall, a remarkable dolerite dike that looks like a man-made wall, split in two by the sandy Matlautsi riverbed. This part of Mashatu is dominated by rocky sandstone outcrops and baobab trees, and it's arguably the most beautiful area in the whole reserve. After a safety brief, Simeon and our tracker Beatty led us on a short climb up Mamagua Hill. We followed them in single file, kitted out in our brand new and extremely comfortable Sapmok Felix. I've left a link to their online shop in the description below, so remember to go and check that out after this video. Mamagua is a historical site, with the earliest inhabitants believed to have arrived in the area in the Middle Stone Ages, and some leaving as late as the 1940s. Numerous stone ruins can still be seen as you walk up the hill, and beads and pieces of pottery can be found between the rocks. But for me, it's the view from the top that makes this place so special. Wish that I could stay Wish for this moment to never go away But it's all in my mind And though I know that there is nothing to find It was the perfect way to start our safari at Mashatu. Enjoying a cold drink and the breathtaking scenery while the sun slowly dipped below the horizon. And you can't put up a fight in the mist Guys, enjoying the view. But not before taking a few photographs of the iconic Rhodes Baobab that grows at the very top of the hill. You'll get some great shots up here with your cell phone, but if you're a keen photographer, I highly recommend bringing a wide-angle lens and a tripod as well. We ended the evening with a delicious meal in the Camp Boma before retreating to our safari tents, excited about the following morning's game drive. What I liked about staying at Tuli Safari Lodge Mashati was the fact that we got to drive in an area that's seldom reachable from the other three camps situated much further north. On top of that, we were in the hands of a very experienced guide, which is always the case in Mashati. Simeon, for instance, has been working here for 22 years. We took a slow drive along the Limpopo River and shortly after sunrise we came across two young lions. They were bathed in golden light, and judging by their alertness, they seemed to either be looking for the rest of the pride, or something to eat.
We followed them for over half an hour until they eventually settled on a dam wall overlooking a wetland. That is nice. Wow. It was at this stage that the weather took a sudden and unexpected turn for the worse, as the wind picked up and the clouds started rolling in. But that wasn't enough to stop us from having a coffee break on a small rise overlooking Nell's Flay. It must have been a very good rainy season, because usually the flay is mostly dried up by August, but this year there was still plenty of water in it. Good rains also meant lots of seeds, which in turn attracted thousands of red-billed quilias. I love watching how they feed together on the ground, rotating in a kind of flowing motion with the birds at the back flying across and landing in front of the rest. Rather than heading straight back to camp, we headed for the edge of another vantage point where the camp staff surprised us with a mouth-watering spread of delicious finger food, which we quickly devoured. And that's what I love so much about Thule Safari Lodge Mashati. Unlike the other camps, they often serve brunch and dinner out in the bush instead of in camp. And just when we thought our morning couldn't get any better, Simeon surprised us with a sighting of not one, not two, but three African rock pythons out in the open. Apparently these guys had been hanging around in this area for a while, and Simeon came past here specifically in the hope of spotting them. As we watched, two of them slithered into a hole at the base of a nearby Mashatu tree, where they would be safe from predators like leopards and eagles. Tuli Safari Lodge Mashatu may not be the wildest camp in the reserve, but it certainly is the homiest. It's got big sprawling lawns and lots of little tucked away spots where you can escape to during the middle of the day, including a viewpoint over a waterhole, a large refreshing pool built into the rock face, and a reading bench overlooking the Limpopo River. This is also a great spot for bird watching, so remember to bring your binoculars with. If you don't mind a bit of a walk, there's even a stargazing spot where you can take the most beautiful photos of the Milky Way after dinner. If you want to learn how to photograph starscapes like this, I cover it in my online course called Take Your Digital Photography Skills to the Next Level, which I've linked in the description below along with my best-selling online course called Wildlife Photography for Beginners and Amateurs. My favorite thing about camp is without a doubt the newly renovated safari tents. In fact, they're by far the most luxurious and comfortable safari tents I've ever stayed in. The camp has eight of these stunning safari tents, along with two suites. And I must say, two nights was all that was needed for Thule Safari Lodge Mashatu to win us over. Our second afternoon drive started with another snake sighting, this time of a puff adder. Simeon took us on some of the most scenic routes west of camp, where the late afternoon sun painted the sandstone ridges and outcrops in golden light. We saw a few of the resident hyraxes and clip springers that one expects to see amongst the rocks, but I was amazed at the amount of giraffe we saw in this rugged environment as well. If you really want to immerse yourself in this stunning sandstone landscape, ask your guide to take you on a guided bushwalk. You can either walk instead of doing a game drive, or do a short drive first to a beautiful area, and then walk from there. I recommend doing so early in the morning before it gets too hot. Our scenic game drive continued until just before sunset, 
where the highlight of our stay at Tuli Safari Lodge Mashatu awaited. Sundowners at another jaw-droppingly beautiful viewpoint, followed by the most delightful and delicious bush dinner I'd ever had. Almost all the camp staff sang in the camp choir that evening and they genuinely seemed eager to sing all night long. And to be honest, I wanted them to. It really was the perfect way to end the first leg of our Mashatu adventure. In the next episode, we spend a morning and afternoon session in Photomashatu's eye-level underground hide where we see more elephants than we could ever have hoped for. I also show you around my home away from home, Mashatu Lodge. Hi Vilias, welcome to Mashatu Lodge.